the topic of today's webinar is moving to five axes, strategies to maximize your machine uptime, to make the most of your investment. Um, there's three companies that have come together to go ahead and provide the information for you today. Uh, we have Dependable Pattern Works, which is one of Portland's uh, longest established machine shops. They provide 3D scanning, CNC machining, pattern making, rapid prototyping, and reverse engineering. We have Ellison Technologies. Um, they are the, at the, one of the Northwest, the Northwest premier provider of DMG and Moriseki uh, machining centers. And then we are Applied CAX, um, or I work for Applied CAX, and we provide Siemens software solutions and uh, engineering services to go ahead and help our clients achieve their full potential. So just to go ahead and set out the agenda for today's call, um, first we're going to have John Goads of Ellison go over market trends. And um, once he finishes that, Michael Grant's going to go over trends and programming tools. And then we're going to go ahead and bring on John Kern of Dependable Pattern Works, um, who's actually successfully recently implemented a five-axis machining center. And so the goal today is just to really understand the, the business value of multi-axis machines, what the market landscape looks like for hardware and software, and then most importantly, hear from, um, hear from someone who's recently gone through the real-world journey and successfully managed the transition into five-axis five machining recently. So um, I'm going to introduce myself. This is me, Ian McGahey. Um, I'm with Applied CEX. I handle managing our our CAD and CAM account. And then um, John Goes is the VP of Engineering Activities at, at Ellison. He also has experience both as a machinist and programmer. Very good. Thank you so much. Let's roll to the first slide. Uh, my goal today is just to identify uh, some of the many varieties of five-axis or multi-axis equipment that's available and some of the criteria that might be used to select what type of multi-axis machine a particular machining company might want to uh, deploy. As we look at this first slide here, we're seeing, as far as what everybody in the marketplace is buying, and, and we cover the states of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, the trends that we see is a 7 or 8% year-over-year increase in the number of multi-axis machines that are being purchased versus three or less axes. So the market has recognized that they need to migrate to multi-axis machining, uh, five to nine axes, to achieve the efficiency uh, and labor utilization uh, that is required to be competitive in the market today. Over the last 24 months, we've deployed uh, over 80 multi-axis machines. Now, these can be uh, simple five-axis vertical machining centers or more complex five-axis horizontals or all the way up to the nine-axis integrated turning centers. As I pointed out here, 20% of them have been five-axis machining centers being used for either five-sided or true five-axis machining. Eighty percent of these have been six axes or more, which typically refer to the integrated turning centers, which can be viewed as a, as a five-axis milling head on top of a one or two spindle lathe. The term five-axis, I, I know it's, it's still banged around a lot in the industry, but it really no longer covers all the processes that are available to you. Uh, as we talked about, we have machines nowadays up to some 12 axes, and it's not unusual to be in a situation where you're actually contouring more than five axes at a time. But you have a variety of machine tool products available to you, uh, the vertical machining center, which most of us are used to, uh, a number of styles of horizontal machining centers, including universal spindle, and we'll have an example of what I mean when I talk about a, a universal type machine. We have turning centers, uh, integrated turning centers that are, again, the integration of, uh, of maybe a five-axis machining center head into a one or two spindle lathe. 
where we may have up to nine axes of control and actually can have uh, most of them uh, in simultaneous operation. Additionally, we have the ability to slave rotary axes. Uh, many of you have grown up with vertical machining centers where we have a, a, a rotary table of some kind on the table. It's not unusual to have situations where we have two rotary axes facing each other and a fixture or workpiece in between them and we have those two uh, axes as slave, so we're driving both ends of the workpiece as we cut it. So what is causing this migration to multi-axis milling? And uh, it's driven by economics, it's driven by labor, and it's driven by technology. The most significant reason, and in many situations, the greatest return on investment comes from process reduction. Many shops are still in situations where they're batching production. We have a lathe op, maybe we have a, a, a mill op or two. So we run everything through the lathe or the saw, the lathe, then we go through the machining center and maybe another machining operation after that. Multi-axis milling, multi-axis machining, in many cases, gives us the ability to deploy a process that is one and done or very close to one and done. We have the ability to do multiple operations in one setup and in one operation, which greatly reduces queue time, work in process, setups, and all that greatly reduces the cost of operations in a machining company. We have the need for labor reduction. We all in this industry recognize that there's not enough talent to achieve what we want to achieve in many companies, and we have to extend the capability effectiveness of the talent that we have. Labor reduction, or better appropriate, uh, or more appropriately, the better use of labor, can be realized when we have a situation where if we have a five-axis or five-sided machine and we're going to take what used to take two or three or four separate setup operations on different uh, workstations and do it in one setup and one operation on a multi-axis machine. Labor utilization, like we talked about, if you're doing fewer setups because you're doing more operations in one setup, you can uh, you have more production with fewer smart guys in the shop. You can make better utilization of the smart guys that you have. Additionally, if we're doing less setups, we're doing more in a single setup, we're going to naturally reduce the number of setup parts and the number of discrepant or scrap work pieces that setups cause. So anytime we can get a setup out, we know we're going to save money. Improved dimensional and geometric accuracy as you move a sprawled process, a process where you're machining on this workstation and then you move over to another fixture of work holding and do some more work and then on to another machine and another setup, we all know that it gives us an opportunity to start losing accuracy as we reposition the part. If we can do more operations in a single setup, and if we can do it from multiple angles, like a five-sided or five-axis machine, we can see that it'll be much easier to hold some of these geometric relationships between the features that we measure. And of course, now that the design engineers have all these various solid modeling programs, they have a free-form design environment that is no longer uh, orthogonal. So we see more and more geometry coming in that indeed is five-axis contouring and hence the move toward that. So very quickly, and, and this is really a crash course, there is a great number of five-axis or multi-axis machines that are available in the marketplace and they can differ greatly, and I want to give just a very quick uh, run-through of some of the types that are available. There's two basic types. We either articulate the spindle, we articulate the table, and there are some machines where we do both. The picture on the screen right now is an example of an articulated table. 
you can see that there's two rotary axes involved in moving the table around. And the table can move from a horizontal to a vertical. And in reality, this table can actually turn upside down. So this is an example of a vertical machining center with an articulated table. There is a picture there where this particular machine, you can actually add a tailstock to it. This style of machine is very popular in medical implants and, and other situations where you really need a tailstock. The advantages of this style typically are speed. This is, can be a very fast machine, a very agile machine. Here is a trunnion style vertical machining center. And this is very popular as well. The difference being that we are supporting uh, one of the rotary axes is from both sides. We still have a vertical spindle here. Uh, the advantage of this machine is it's a little more robust. We don't have the cantilevered uh, rotary table design. It can handle more weight. This type can also get to negative angles. So this table can roll over past vertical in both directions. And so it has very good access to the workpiece and it has very good angular envelope to work in. These machines can have drive mechanisms on both sides of the trunnion, so we can import a lot of torque into the trunnion rotary table. Horizontal spindle, we use a, typically it's not unusual to see a trunnion style uh, with a rotary on it, as you can see, and a horizontal spindle. This also can uh, roll over into negative angles. It gives us the advantage of the horizontal spindle versus the vertical. Because we're not articulating the spindle, we can have very heavy duty spindles. So if we have a high power application, uh, we need to deploy 50 to 80 horsepower on the spindle, maybe uh, you know, many hundreds of foot pounds of torque. Uh, we can do so because the spindle is not articulated, the workpiece is. Also, the horizontals lend themselves to automation in the form of pallet changers and uh, cell systems and whatnot. These tend to be more rigid machines. They'll support heavier cutting. They'll support higher torque, higher horsepower, uh, and heavier workpieces. Here's an example of a universal spindle. Now, this is a machine design where we have one rotary table on the workpiece, but the other rotary table is up on the head. And this has the advantage of being able to handle very heavy workpieces, but still have a good angular envelope, and still have a headstock that's capable of delivering a lot of power or torque uh, to the workpiece. So as we get into uh, certain aerospace applications, certain he uh, heavy-duty applications, the universal head uh, can be a great advantage. So when we review uh, briefly what we've talked about, you have choices as far as having articulated table designs. And uh, the advantage that you have uh, on articulated uh, table designs are we can put a variety of spindles in the machine tool. Most of these styles will do negative angles. You can actually get up underneath the part a little bit. And those machines tend to do well in situations where we're trying to do high-speed contouring, uh, have a very agile machine uh, with a little bit lighter work pieces. We can have articulated spindle or moving spindle designs. And, and in verticals, we've all seen five-axis machines where there, there may be rotaries on the headstock where we can tilt the rotary or tilt the spindle, if you will, in different directions. These machines are typically applied where we have a larger work area and heavier work pieces. And then we have the universal head designs, which typically offer the largest work areas can handle the largest or heaviest work pieces and also allow for uh, good cutting performance with a heavy duty headstock. The control systems that are available in the marketplace today, and this is not meant to be a, a, a complete list, but the, the ones that you commonly, commonly see provided on five axis machines, the Siemens control, uh, which has very good five axis capability, FANUC, uh, Mitsubishi as well, we see in a variety of manufacturers, and Heidenheim, which we see typically in situations where there's going to be a lot of shop floor programming versus CAM system programming. 